nice to see you. I always nice to see the local media and the in the uh, comfortable confines of, of the meeting room. So, any questions? Hey, Les, I uh, wanted to ask you a little bit about Jalen Daniels. Um, when you kind of look back at where he was entering the season opener and kind of his development since then, um, just how much progress has he made? And why wasn't, why wasn't he ready to be the starter, you know, entering the season? Um, the entering the season, he didn't have enough snaps to get him ready, period. No matter how you, you put it, and, and, and we needed a spring ball for him so that he could run the show. And uh, he didn't have that opportunity. The, uh, um, but Jalen Daniels, is, is, he's maturing every week. And it's some of the throws, if you, if you look at them, they're spectacular throws. And uh, we're getting him in position to make him be our leader or help him be our leader. So, And what, what are maybe the, the next steps he needs to make in his development? Well, I, I don't know if the, the next step is, a, is, is exactly an identifiable piece. I think, you, I think you work through reads on the passing game. I think when, uh, when he rolls to his left, it's, there's a, you know, some concern. When he rolls to his right, um, you know, how he, how he brings a ball across his body. Things like that are something that you work on every day, and it, and it comes – in bits and pieces and uh and you count on it because that's that's how you improve you you uh you take those bits and pieces and make them your game so hey les because of how this season all came together with covid no spring ball like you said uh i mean jalen it, it's it's almost like he showed up in august and, and started being with you guys. I know that wasn't quite the case, but um, I, I guess, have you ever had a situation where you're playing a quarterback who's had, I guess, such limited time to go through practice and learn things with you guys? Nothing. Uh, there was no quarterback that I have ever been a part of in his development that had so little time to improve. And uh, I, I think what he's got accomplished is really an amazing thing considering you know, we're, we're going through things and as an adult mind, you know, this is, this is not, uh, this is not a normal year. This pandemic is, you know, something that is very difficult to describe. I, I, I think everybody in the room would you know, see it differently. And, uh, and then you, you, here you have a true freshman stepping into a, a, a very athletic conference and teaching him things about running the ball, teaching him things about throwing the ball, teaching him things about his reads. Those are all, those are all things that take time. And, and certainly um, I think he's making, you know, good progress certainly, uh, but uh, you need to continue and, and, and as a team, we need to improve. Yeah. And then just following up on that, if you could give one word, just one word to describe Jalen, what would that one word be and why? Now, you know, no one takes one word. They say, they say something like, nice smile, okay? And for me, that would be the, the piece that I would enjoy because it means that he's put all those things that are, you know, important in order and such that he can, you know, step into a huddle or step into a practice and put a smile on his face and go to work hard and really be enjoyed by his, his teammates. That's, that's, that's my one word, smile. Pretty damn good. I thought that was really a nice answer. You guys could give me a a uh, an applause at some point in time, but it's not that important today. I can give it to you. That, that was solid. <laughs> that was solid. I want to follow up on that, though, Les. I, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, you, you've come across in the short time we've been around you as eternally optimistic, positive, uh, seeing the good in everything, and, and that answer was a little bit that way. 
where does that come from? Has that always been you? I mean, throughout all your coaching stops, throughout your life, uh, why are you wired that way? Do you know? Um, yeah, yeah, I do. It's uh, a guy named uh, Hope Miles. His uh, first name was named, it was given him for Hope Faith Charity. And uh, as an example, I was a six foot one, 225 pound offensive guard playing in the 70s. And I can remember being at a, uh, a scrimmage and, and really had a terrible scrimmage at the, the school that I attended and uh, got in the car and I could not stop myself from shedding tears. And uh, my father said, hey, he says, you're the best guard in the stadium. Now, it was a spring scrimmage, and it was uh, I was never the best guard in the stadium. There were always at least two guards better than I. And uh, But uh, I think that everything that he approached, he approached with how you do it, not how I can't do it. And I think he is a uh, was a great example for me, great advocate for me, and uh, yeah, I, I think that that I, I read an article once too, with uh, who was the head coach at the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, one of the may have been Chan Gailey, but uh, it it was an article that said it's not what you say, it's how you describe it. In other words, ball security as opposed to don't fumble. I mean, it's, it's, it's a simple, it's a simple thing, but that's how you do it. You, it's, you don't ever talk about don't fumble. You always talk about um, ball security, just, just the way it is. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Les, I was wanting to know, what's the status on the offensive linemen that you were missing, and how did the young guys grade out? Young guys uh, played hard. They uh, very, very aggressive, um, made some mistakes, certainly. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, think they'll be, I think they'll be very talented eventually. But they stepped in, big smile on their face, and went to work. It's uh, following their, their leader, that, that quarterback over there. So. Hey, what's – What's the status for uh, Api and Adagio? I mean, is our protocols going to keep them out another week? Uh, protocols uh, appear to be in effect there, and uh, it's. Uh, I think I think there's some I think there's some some defining. I don't think there's any way to change protocol, but I think there's some defining that needs to be done uh, when it comes to tracing. So you would expect them to be out for that game at OU? Yeah, absolutely. How, um, looking at the O-line a little bit more, um, I guess, how do you think they, they held up against Iowa State, given the circumstances of missing two starters? I thought they held up really well, to be honest with you. I think, I think they improved. I think the youthful guys that stepped in there listened, got things accomplished, and really um, – um, I think the, the veterans that were there beside them helped them uh, in in the uh, in the day. So, yeah, I uh, I think those guys did remarkably well considering they're you know some true freshmen. Les, how is um, Daniels? I, he limped off with an ankle. It looked like he's uh, he's he's going to be fine. There's not. A not a problem there to get, you know, sometimes you can get an ankle that you are favoring a little bit tweaked. And uh, the good news is it's, there's not any extra swelling. It's the, it's just a, it was an uncomfortable moment. Hey Les, it seems like Dejon Terry and Marcus Harris have been two of your most active guys on the defensive line. How would you evaluate their performances through six games this season? I think they're doing, a, a, again, a great job. Both of them young guys. Marcus Harris makes some, some big athletic plays. Um, and and Deshaun Terry is a 
if you're if you're planning on playing a a a center, um, you're gonna you're gonna want to watch his film because he's a pretty talented guy. Hey, when, when you're kind of rebuilding a program and you're facing a team like Oklahoma that puts up so many points, what are the type of things you need to do to, to, to be competitive in a game like this? Well, I, I think what you have to do is what you always, you always have to do is um, visualize those plays that are going to be good against this team, call those plays, limit your call sheet, and give yourself the situations that you need to win with. And uh, if you do that, I think you get, you, get the, you get the best chance to win. All right, I'll ask another one. <laughs> hey, uh, I'll ask you about fourth downs. Um, you guys have had some success going for it on fourth downs this year. Um, the other day against Iowa State, I think it was a fourth and six at the 40. And um, the way it turned out, uh, Grimm ends up wide open and Jalen hits him. Was, was that kind of like the way the play was designed or did it just develop and turn out that way? No, that was the play. That, that, that play was designed that way. And uh, I think the, the relationship between Luke and, uh, and uh, Jalen is, is, I think that's going to be healthy for, for the team for quite some time. Both of them are freshmen. And I mean, with you guys, I think you've had like, I think you're seven for 14 on fourth downs. Uh, are you going for it more often because you're trailing or is that just kind of the approach you like to take in certain situations? Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at, at uh, different situations um, with the opportunity to go based on what uh, is our strength and, and do we have a call? And is that, are we ready for that? Because we've just, if we've used two, we want to, you know, maybe there's a third that we'd like to use. But if, if not, then, uh, then we, we kick it on fourth now. Hey, Les, you're playing a lot of young guys. And I know through the summer, I think that it got shut down for COVID for a little bit. I'm talking about from the angle of strength and conditioning. How important is it for those guys to get a full year in and get stronger? The uh, what, what happens is there's six week programs and there's eight week programs, and our guys didn't get to saddle up. It was it was you know we turned it turned it off for quite a period of time, and uh, I, I, we got a great weight strength uh, department and a great uh, weight strength room, um, but we haven't had the opportunity to be in there on a consistent basis. And, uh, and it is important. Those, those young freshmen that we're talking about, they want to, some want to lean up, some want to uh, muscle up. And it, and it takes a weight room in a year round uh, position to function and, and deal these guys a, the, the importance of, you know, the workout and, the, and being a steady uh, show up at the weight room and get it done. And uh, we've, and, and a lot of other schools too, but we've not had that opportunity. Les, how big a test is this? Oklahoma scored a ton of points the other night. Is this a, a monster test? Well, they're as talented as any team that we've seen. And um, I think our team looks forward to those kinds of challenges. And uh, I think we'll, I think we'll step in and play hard. I mean, I know we will. Les, with all the young guys that you guys are playing and starting defensively, have you noticed any of the upperclassmen starting to uh, maybe step into leadership roles? And if so, who would those guys be? Yeah, I, I think a number of our guys, I think, uh, um, Kyron Johnson is a is a guy that's even though his production is normally high at this point, but he's had some some uh, some good games that were not the ball didn't go his way, and uh, but uh, he's he stepped up and done a great job in leadership both on and off the field. Kenny Logan 
Kenny Logan, although he's youthful, has done a great job in on and off the field leadership. And our uh, even our, our true freshman quarterback steps onto the field, brings that smile with him, and everybody says, "Okay, let's go to work. It's time to it's time to get this done." Hey, Coach, I kind of wanted to stay on that in terms of like Jalen. What have you seen early out of his leadership? Obviously, he's still pretty early in his career. I guess what are what are some of the things that you've seen that you've liked out of his leadership? Well, he's uh, he's stepped in and, and played in a nicked fashion and and really played with courage and uh but his leadership on a daily basis uh, wherever we practice whatever we're doing is is exactly what you'd want you know taking hard work on with a smile on his face and and enjoying it and that uh you know that's that's the way it's supposed to be Jake. Coach, you mentioned a minute ago that, that this weekend you know your guys will go down there and play hard. Um, and, and that kind of brought me to a question of expectations. I, I wonder, where do you set the level of expectations for this team right now and, and for yourself? And, and maybe where do you think fans should set it? I mean, is, is playing hard a good enough expectation? Is, is being in the game late the expectation? Is, is winning the game late the expectation? I mean, do you have a feel for that? Um. I wish I could have uh, decided about our expectations on on victory early in my career because I would have decided that we would have won them all. Okay, <laughs> but so but the the issue is is expectations are the the little things that you need to get accomplished so that when you step onto the field, you're comfortable playing. Because it's always the little things that, whether well, it's snap count or whatever it is, it's always those things that that impede your progress. And you know, I can tell you, hey, men, we're supposed to win this game, or we're going to win this game, or it's going to be. You, the, the the truth of the matter is, is the guy that sits in the chairs that I'm addressing that are empty. It's those guys that will make a difference. And I. Uh, I can tell you this, the games that I've won and lost in the in the past, I can tell you I did not know many times which side of the uh the uh scoreboard I'd be on, the uh the W's or the L's. Thank you. Hey coach, do you have any um any stories about some of your old trips down to Norman and any funny stories or funny memories from, from making the trip down there from O State? I can tell you that um, I always respected the opponent there. I think that they're a uh, quality football team and quality guys. And Coach Lincoln Riley does a great job. I uh, I enjoyed uh, Bob Stoops when I would go down there, and he would. There was uh, there was good banter between us, and um, I, uh, I I root, I rooted for him every every time that they played somebody else, not us. <laughs> so. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great place. It's a historic field. Um, it's a shame that there won't be as many people as they could fit in it because that it sounds very much like the inside of a jet air engine. I mean, it's loud when when that crowd's allowed to be there. So um, there was a uh, a uh, conversation that uh, that that. Uh, that a, an ongoing run uh, with uh, with uh, coach and myself, uh, and it uh, was an enjoyable venture. So, you you guys will have to look that up. I'm not telling that story. Anything else for coach? Hey, uh, one real quick one for me. Um, you mentioned there's no practice tomorrow because of election day, right? What, uh, how did you all kind of alter your schedule this week to, to make that work? Um, we practice um, late um, Sunday and we put ourselves in a position to go hard today. And then Tuesday where they, they go off to, um, to get uh, their boat in the same thing happens with the, the make sure that our staff has that opportunity. I think most of the staff has already voted and uh, we're going to use it then to, to get ahead a little bit and 
but we're not inviting our players certainly because that's not the that's not the spirit of the rule. And so what we're the players will have to sit and and enjoy themselves after they get their uh, their voting done. But uh, yeah, I uh, I think it was I think it's the right way. I mean now we're we're Tuesday we're ahead and it's uh i think the opportunity is is still a very good one to be prepared very well uh, on on that note do you know what percent of players or how many of them are, are registered to vote i do not i do not i'd like to i'd like to say i did i can i can tell you that i was i encouraged them to get out and vote and if they wanted to make a difference in this world that that was the very significant difference. Just just vote. All right, thanks everyone. We'll have some players here shortly.